off this list in our number 10 spot, we have Matthew Wayne. We have all had quite the year trying to adjust to the differences we are currently facing, but some people certainly have an easier time adjusting than others. Matthew Wayne is a small British YouTuber who posts videos of himself playing paintball, but he found himself in some hot water earlier this year. For some reason, Matthew decided it would be a good idea to film himself calling in a bomb threat to a hospital. Apparently, he was upset at some treatment he had received closer to the beginning of the global spread of the coronavirus and thought that it was an appropriate way to deal with his feelings about it. During the phone call, Matthew allegedly referred to himself as a YouTuber, made a ton of accusations towards the staff, and apparently also made a racist remark. I can totally understand being frustrated, but this really takes it to another level. Shockingly, Matthew was only sentenced to 12 weeks and a few small fines. Let's hope this was enough for him to have learned his lesson. In our number 9 spot today, we have Kangwa Ren. Before I dive into this one, guys, please don't forget to hit that thumbs up if you're enjoying the video so far because it really helps us out. Kangwa Ren, who is better known as his YouTube name, Reset, makes gaming videos and has over 1 million subscribers on his channel. In 2017, he made a video that saw him remove the cream filling from an Oreo, replace it with toothpaste, and then give it to an unsuspecting homeless man who later threw up. When people began to give him backlash for this video, he removed it and instead put up another video of him giving the same man a $20 bill as if that's compensation enough. The judge in this case certainly took into consideration the fact that he had made more than $2,000 on this video alone, so the measly offer of $20 was most certainly insufficient. The court decided on a 15 month sentence and a fine of $20,000 as well as a 5 year YouTube ban. It is unclear if Reset ended up actually heading off to serve his sentence or not, but his channel hasn't been posted on since August of this year. In our number 8 spot we have Austin Jones. Austin Jones was a YouTube musician who started on the platform all the way back in 2007. Last year Austin was sentenced to 10 years in prison for soliciting underage girls for photos and videos. The complaints started in 2015 and in 2017 he was arrested. He ended up pleading guilty and admitted to using different platforms such as Facebook and iMessage. The 10 year sentence comes from him pleading guilty on one count of the things that he was accused of. Initially his YouTube account was demonetized once the allegations came to light, but it was quickly removed entirely following the guilty plea. In our number 7 spot today we have Ruslan Sokolovsky. Okay, this one is kind of crazy. Russian YouTuber and law student Ruslan Sokolovsky is facing jail time because he was playing Pokemon Go in church. He had filmed himself playing the game and a few weeks later was awoken in his apartment by the police coming in to arrest him. Apparently this is a crime in Russia because it is obviously offensive to the people who were there to worship. I completely agree that it was extremely rude and distasteful for him to pull this kind of a stunt, but 5 years in jail for playing Pokemon Go does seem kind of insane. Like Matthew Wayne called in a bomb threat to a hospital and got a significantly lighter sentence. After Ruslan was arrested, he was on house arrest for a while and is banned from speaking to anyone other than his lawyer and the people who are investigating him. This arrest is seen as very controversial and has a lot of people discussing freedom of speech laws. While I'm not exactly sure if there has been an official sentencing or not, Ruslan is facing 5 years in prison for this offence. In our number 6 spot we have Billy Altador and Ivani Lewis. Billy Altador and Ivani Lewis are the YouTube couple who run their channel called Beam Squad. The pair post videos of them and their family doing challenges and pranks and just talking about their daily lives. Last year the couple was arrested and charged for fraud, which they of course documented on their YouTube channel. According to court documents, the pair used stolen identities to create fake bank accounts and debit cards. The pair then used personal information that they had stolen in order order to access the Social Security Administration website where they then made direct benefit payments into their new fake bank accounts. There were allegedly 1400 people whose benefits they tried to access and of course some were successful and some were not. After this the couple then used stolen personal information to file false tax returns and again directed the false tax returns into their fake bank accounts. Of course they were eventually found out which is what led to their arrest. 
They both pleaded guilty and Billy was sentenced to two years while Ivani was sentenced to one year and one day. And they were also fined close to $94,000 in restitution. Billy has since gone away to serve his time, but because of the fact that they have kids, Ivani will be waiting to serve her time until Billy is back and able to take care of the kids. Their channel continues to grow and gain subscribers and sees around 12 uploads a month. In our number 5 spot today we have Daniel Silva. Daniel is a YouTuber and tattoo artist who may be better known for his time on the tattoo competition show Ink Master. Daniel uploads videos of him tattooing and having conversations with celebrities, influencers and athletes. Things took a really sad turn for Daniel earlier this year though. On May 10th, Daniel was speeding his 2020 McLaren 600 LT with his friend and famous YouTuber Corey LeBerry in the passenger seat when he accidentally lost control of the vehicle and ended up crashing into a stop sign and tree. This crash ended up taking the life of Corey. Daniel was then arrested and ended up pleading no contest in July. In August, he was sentenced to 364 days in jail as well as five years of probation, 250 hours of community service, and if he fails to comply with any of his probation terms, he'll be facing a four-year prison sentence. Daniel has actually since been released from prison, but his YouTube and Instagram accounts both remain inactive. In our number four spot today, we have Ferdian Paleka. Earlier this year, the YouTuber was arrested after posting an extremely transphobic video. The video showed him handing fake aid packages to trans women that were actually filled with bricks and garbage and rotten vegetables. Of course, this video came under immediate fire for its disturbing content, and Ferdian responded by posting a fake apology video. He was charged with online defamation under the Information and Electronic Transactions Act, which carries a maximum four-year prison sentence, as well as deliberately breaking the law and bringing harm to others, which is punishable by up to 12 years in prison under the same law. After Ferdian's arrest, there were videos posted that quickly went viral of him being ordered around to do embarrassing tasks by other inmates. The videos received comments from his parents about how much it angered them to see their child being humiliated publicly. They are absolutely right because that is not okay, but it sure is ironic. Luckily for Ferdian, the trans women that he victimized have decided to drop the charges against him, so he ended up being released from police custody earlier this year. But of course not before he made a snide comment that he was more comfortable in his jail cell rather than in his car before driving off. Hopefully this was just an ill-timed joke and he has learned his lesson because things truly Truly could have been a lot different for him. His YouTube channel remains active with just under 300,000 subscribers. In our number three spot today, we have Andre Pies. Andre is a Russian YouTuber with roughly 800,000 subscribers who posts videos of himself exploring abandoned sites and bunkers. He was arrested in August for allegedly obtaining and spreading state secrets. He has yet to face trial, but he is still in police custody and could potentially receive up to eight years if he is found guilty. It is unclear if Andre plans to plead guilty or not to the charges against him. His lawyer has said that the charges are not linked to any of his social media posts, but some people speculate differently because of the fact that there is a suspicious anonymous comment on one of his Instagram posts. The post was from when Andre gained access to a functioning radar system that Russia uses for its nuclear strike early warning system, and the comment was promising him that big trouble was coming his way, which is super ominous. As of right now, his channel is still up, but it hasn't been posted on since an almost three hour live stream on August 2nd, where he apparently speaks about his legal issues, but unfortunately I can't speak Russian and the English captions aren't so great, so I have no idea what what exactly he is saying. In our number two spot today, we have Anthony Locke. Anthony Locke, who's better known as his YouTube name Gas Kings, was a YouTuber who posted car videos. He has almost 700,000 subscribers and his most viewed video has 7.7 .7 million views. In 2018, Anthony went to trial over a scamming scheme. According to the court, Anthony and his partner Ray decided to set up a fake website in order to scam people out of their pensions. The website claimed that you could sign up and invest your pension funds and and that half would most definitely be returned back to you, but the other half would be invested into different eco-friendly firms, which ended up not being true at all. 
And instead, Anthony took the money from pensioners and spent it on expensive cars. If stealing people's money wasn't bad enough already, apparently some of the victims were already in financial turmoil, which certainly just makes the matters worse. Anthony stole close to 1 million pounds and was charged with 23 counts of fraud and 3 counts of money laundering, which landed him a 5 year sentence. In our number 1 spot today, we have German Abraham Loera Acosta. German was a small but mighty YouTuber. He would put out motivational messages for his subscribers to view and was known for his catchphrase, I think the mind is the only thing that limits us. While this may be true and potentially some great advice, things really took a turn for this guy. In February of 2018, the 25 year old YouTuber was part of a group and a scheme that devised a plan to kidnap a woman named Talia Dennis, who is a lawyer, and hold her hostage for ransom. The YouTuber rented a house where Talia was held captive and demanded 2 million pesos in Bitcoin in exchange for her safe return. Well, it didn't exactly work out as planned. The police rescued Talia two days after her kidnapping, and boy am I glad that she was uninjured, although I'm sure that would have been a super traumatic thing to have to live through. All of the men who were involved have been arrested and just this year German received his sentence of 50 years in prison as well as a fine of 500,000 pesos. I'm glad that the kidnapping and ransom of Talia was obviously taken very seriously. Let's start off at number 10 with Sniper Wolf. Do we actually go the sp I don't know, she spells Sniper Wolf with like so many S's. For now we'll just call her just Sniper Wolf. <laughs> well she tweeted out this picture of herself, this was her mugshot. This picture the picture was from 2016 when Sniper Wolf got arrested for disorderly conduct. So let me explain what happened. According to Sniper Wolf, she said that her and her boyfriend, well her boyfriend at the time Sausage, I don't know what kind of name that is, but he had an image on his phone of another girl and Sniper Wolf wanted to see what was on his phone. He wouldn't give it to her, so that's when she decided to scream. To scream on the top of her lungs. And that's when neighbors heard her yell. When the police showed up, Sniper Wolf wasn't talking to the police. Instead, she tried to go upstairs in her own home, but police blocked her, they stopped her, they arrested her. They arrested her for disorderly conduct because she wasn't talking to the police. But Sniper Wolf thought she didn't have to talk to police because the whole you have the right to remain silent. But that law takes effect when you're actually getting arrested. If police have questions about a potential what people think is to be a domestic violence, I think you should be answering the police's questions. If not, then yeah, I would take you into custody because I got questions for you. So stupid. I hate my life right now. They handcuffed us in the house, took us outside, put me in one cop car, put sausage in another cop car, and they took us down to the station. Sniper Wolf was kept in a holding cell with another woman. It seems like Sniper Wolf was in jail for just a few days until she had to appear in front of a judge. The judge determines whether or not she gets bail, if she can be released right away, and Sniper Wolf so lucky she was able to just be released right away. No bail, no nothing. Number nine is Nelk Films. Basically, he's gonna be held in jail for the night, and then it's up to the judge to decide if he wants to be let out by a bond or if he's going to be kept in depending on how bad the misdemeanor is. So Nelk film started on YouTube years ago and fun fact for you guys, Nelk is now Jesse and Kyle, but it used to be other people back then. It was Kyle, it was these twins, and I actually brought them into my studio before they really got into YouTube and I really tried to push them into this like YouTube direction because I, I saw something going on there. So I used to talk to them all the time and I, and I did tell them be careful with these pranks, but I guess they took things to the next level and they're now finding themselves in trouble. Trouble. I think Nelk films are great. They do amazing pranks. And if they didn't do these like next level pranks, they may not have been as big or as famous as they are now. But it's they're finding themselves in a lot of trouble. Well, in this case, it's Jesse. It's hard to determine what prank got Jesse arrested, but from what I was able to gather, he was walking around with a fake bloody hoodie and he was dragging around a bloody shovel in a store trying to scare people. Jesse has since been released from prison, but now he has a long road ahead of him with court and legal issues while well, he had this to say. We have to say that the Columbus police handled the situation very well. We understand the situation could have been potentially life threatening for us as well for them. So we're going to have to wait and see to see what happens to the Nelk boys, but best of luck to them. At number eight, we're talking about a Spanish YouTuber, Kangua 
a red, and he decided to play a prank on a homeless man by giving him an Oreo filled toothpaste. After the homeless man ate the Oreo that was filled with toothpaste, he actually got very sick and he started to throw up. The police was called and the Spanish YouTuber was arrested. Prosecutors are seeking $37,000 in compensation because the homeless man was humiliated and it got him very sick. Also they want him to face two years behind bars. So this was his reaction to this. Maybe I've gone a bit too far, but look at the positive side. This will help him clean his teeth. I think he hasn't cleaned his teeth since before he became poor. Is this real life right now? This is probably one of the most insensitive thing I've ever heard. But I think a jail sentence, like a two year jail sentence for this is just way too extreme. Like, come on. What do you guys think? Number seven. Okay, that looks very dangerous. Well, this video is uploaded onto the Rocco Piazza Vlogs channel. It's about this 10 year old kid who lives a crazy life in Corona, California. Well, his parents help him with his videos from time to time. And that prank you just saw, well, that prank got his mom arrested for child endangerment. For some reason, the video is still allowed to be on this channel, and it has almost 5 million views at the time of this recording. When Corona police saw this video, they arrested 45 year old Holly Piazza and her fiance, 37 year old Brian Chase. Moving on to number six, and number six is just so stupid. This right here is 22 year old Dylan Birch, who decided to play a prank on Disneyland. He thought it would be so funny to tell Disney that there's an active shooter in the park. The park went into a state of emergency. Obviously, the police didn't think that this was a funny prank, so he was arrested, and in front of a judge, he pleaded guilty to a charge of disturbing the peace and disorder intoxication charges as well. So he was quickly caught and sent to jail. Only on 6 Tonight, we are learning about a scare at Disney. A young man warning people at the Contemporary Resort that an active shooter was on the loose. He told deputies he was joking. Number 5. Whose YouTube videos have made him a star is under arrest. Accused of using his fame. A young send... YouTube celebrity has been arrested along with his manager. Say Steven and Fernandez of Compton used his own celebrity to meet. Authorities began their investigation of Fernandez. So, yeah, we're talking about 15 year old, well, at the time, Steven Fernandez, who was arrested after cops found out that he's been using his celebrity status to sexually exploit an underage girl. Law enforcement also says that Fernandez met a 12 year old girl in his hometown of Compton last month and allegedly promised he he'd introduced her to big name celebrities in exchange for sexual acts. The girl agreed and a sexual act was committed. This kid got famous after he started a movie, he started to gain popularity on YouTube. Apparently Steven's manager might have been involved as well and everyone on his team was arrested. They all went to jail. This case is still ongoing. Steven Fernandez says he's out of jail as of right now and he has now denied the claims after a few years after this whole incident started and he's finally talking about what happened. He he said that his manager might have actually been the one messaging this girl and it wasn't him. Well, he was my guardian. Thinking about this girl, I mean, she was she was 12 years old and for, for my for my manager to be accused of this, it was it was it was like real gnarly like like this guy is like 20 something years old. Moving on to number 4, we have Roman Atwood. He found himself in some trouble after a prank he did back in 2014. Somebody called in saying that you yeah, guys him. were breaking into an ATM. Sorry, yeah, sorry. Sorry, ATM. We're just it's bought, your ATM. We, we own it. it yeah. Fake cash. So the prank Roman Atwood and his team set up was. Well, they were pretending to break into an ATM, but people took notice and called the police because this is a normal thing that people would do. The police were pretty pissed off that they were called to a fake prank. They were saying that this prank could have put their lives at risk. You're putting our lives at risk and you're putting other people's lives at risk because we're running our lights and sirens trying to get here because we think somebody's trying to rob us. I understand. Also, pranks like this, it's just such a waste of time. It's a waste of taxpayers' money. It costs so much when you have to send these police officers into to action and it, it, this isn't a reason why we need police officers and because this was a pretty big deal I mean stealing money in an ATM there could be there could have been a lot of money in there there was actually helicopters as well to just make sure that there was a visual on the suspects and to make sure that they were captured Wow. Awesome. Vitaly was also part of this prank. They used to do pranks together back in the day. Looks like they're not happy. Looks like we might be going to jail. It's so much for nice cops. We're either going, all going to jail, Chase won't, 
Well, we will because we were in the act. So the police officers took everyone's camera, the SD cards, because now everything will be used as evidence. So in the end, Roman Atwood was arrested, so was most of his team, anyone who was involved with a fake robbery. And speaking about Vitaly, he actually found himself arrested many, many times. So you know what? Vitaly's up next at number three. Let's talk about one of his craziest illegal stunts. Vitaly decided to go streaking during the World Series. This is one of the most televised events on TV. Well, Vitaly decided to take off all of his clothes and to go streaking during the World Cup Finals. Vitaly also went streaking during an NBA Finals game. I remember when that happened, and it's just, it's so insane. And you know what? Let's not forget the time that he streaked during the World Series back in 2017. I mean, come on. Keep your clothes on. Vitaly is actually quite fast and it looked hard to catch him. Well, he said he gets a high from doing all of this. He loves danger and getting into situations like this. He has been arrested many, many times and streaking is a felony. For the first time offenders, it's usually a misdemeanor. After that, you could be sentenced of up to six months in jail in order to pay a fine of $1,000. But this guy has streaked so many times, so he keeps serving jail time. It's like it doesn't phase him. And actually, at number two, I wanted to show you guys another prank he did that was absolutely insane. So Vitaly is appearing for the second time on this list. Well, what he did, it became global news. We begin with breaking news. A man has climbed the Hollywood sign. Good evening, I'm Micah Ullman. And I'm Cher Calvin. We've seen him waving a white flag that says, I'm back, there it is. This was how Vitaly wanted to return back to YouTube after he stepped away from YouTube for a while. This guy caused such a stir. There were so many LAPD helicopters flying around, so many news helicopters flying around, making sure that they had a visual on Vitaly and they wanted to capture the whole moment. They weren't sure how dangerous he was. They didn't know who he was at the time. I mean, for someone to do something crazy like he did, you just never know what they're doing, their, their state of mind, they might have a weapon. Back to our breaking news, a man believed to be a YouTube prankster has climbed the Hollywood sign. Tim Lynn monitoring the situation overhead in Sky 5. Tim. Is this real life right now? There are so many helicopters. I would be freaking out. I would be shaking. Like, I just couldn't do something like that. Vitaly always regarded himself as a villain, and this is what he said before going to jail. Villains missed me. They really missed me, the villains. And I have to show them who is back. Natural born pranksters, nothing can stop us. It just seems like this guy is always in a ton of legal problems. Finally, number one, we have Austin Jones. Hi guys. I know a lot of you probably have some really harsh and negative opinions towards me right now. And I understand why you do. But I'm asking you to please put those opinions aside for a few minutes and listen to everything I have to say. Austin Jones was arrested after investigators found out that he's been communicating with underage female fans. Austin Jones admitted to everything. So he was on Facebook to have sexually explicit chats with the girls. He told the underage girls to make videos of themselves dancing in a sexually explicit way and instructed them to perform sexual acts knowing that they're just 14 and 15 years old. He actually wanted them to say their age in these videos. He then requested that these vulnerable girls send him the videos and he has confirmed that he did receive some of these videos and he watched them while masturbating to them. I mean, this is just sickening. Austin Jones could face up to 30 years in prison and he's banned from the internet. He was becoming a big YouTuber and he took advantage of his fans in a very sick way. Starting off this list in our number 10 spot, we have Mona Lisa Perez. Mona Lisa is a YouTuber who used to post makeup and fashion vlogs, but now makes videos more focused on her family and her children. On June 26, 2017, Mona Lisa and her boyfriend Pedro Ruiz set out to make an extremely dangerous video. They decided that they would put a really thick encyclopedia on his chest and Mona Lisa would shoot a gun at the book. They were expecting the book to be thick enough to stop the bullet, but unfortunately this was a grave miscalculation. The bullet ended up going straight through the book and Pedro passed away shortly after. Mona Lisa was arrested immediately and talk began to swirl about who was to blame. In the end it was decided that both 
both of them played a role in this terrible day. Mona Lisa was sentenced on December 19th, 2017 to only six months in prison after she pleaded guilty to the charges. She has since served her time and will remain on probation for the next 10 years as well as receiving a lifetime ban from owning a firearm. She continues to make YouTube videos now with 42,000 subscribers but tends to get about 80% dislikes on her videos. In our number 9 spot today we have Valdrox Studio. But before I dive into this one, please don't forget to like this video because it really helps us out. Valdrox was a YouTuber who was known for his animated characters. He was quickly controversial for his not safe for work content and the fact that he stole a lot of his content from other artists, as well as the fact that he was apparently pretending to be a teenage girl in the beginning while he was actually a man in his 20s. On April 11th, 2019, the man behind Valdrox named David Alejandro Pascal Argueta was arrested after the Guatemalan police raided his home. He was arrested for receiving and selling photos of girls. He would bait people into sending him photos using the guise of collaboration. In December of 2019, he faced trial for his atrocious crimes and received a sentence of three years and five months. Unfortunately, there is a law that gives people who have been sentenced to less than five years the option to pay a sum of money instead of actually serving time. It is pretty upsetting that money got him out of having to actually go to jail, but he has been banned from the internet, which is most certainly for the best. In our number 8 spot today we have Jay Station. Jay is a Canadian YouTuber who is known for his fake prank videos. He's extremely controversial because of the type of content that he posts. He has been arrested quite a few times and has even deleted his channel in the past before starting a new one. Earlier this year Jay decided to post a video where he claimed that his girlfriend had died. This was untrue and just an idea used to garner attention and gain sympathy subscribers. Later the Toronto police showed up at Jay's house to arrest him after that same girlfriend had accused him of a and a with a weapon. Jay has since been released and has begun uploading on YouTube again with the same girlfriend. The pair has claimed to have reconciled their differences and let's hope that this is the end of Jay Station controversies. In our number 7 spot we have VJP Nair. VJ was a YouTuber who was arrested in September for posting videos that allegedly contained extremely derogatory remarks about women. Apparently prior to his arrest he was actually attacked by a group of women activists who took his phone and laptop to hand over to the police. His channel has since become private since the police need to review all of its content in order to conduct their investigation. There's a lot of bizarre stuff going on in this case, like his potentially false claims to be a film director as well as a teacher and a potentially fake PhD that he claims he has in clinical psychology. He is still under investigation at the moment, but he is facing five years in prison if he is found guilty. In our number six spot today, we have Ahmad and Zainab Hassan. The Egyptian YouTube couple are known for their comedy videos and vlogs and quickly gained success. The pair recently welcomed their first child who they quickly began adding to their videos. Once they began to include their daughter in the videos, people began to get upset over the fact that it really did seem like the baby didn't want to be involved. There was a video where the child was clearly unhappy being posed for it and was crying uncontrollably while the pair just laughed and didn't really do anything to comfort the obviously upset child. There was a video that ended up being the final straw for a lot of people when it showed Zenab with dark paint on her face which is already upsetting and derogatory enough, but she then clearly terrifies the child who's again crying with what she has just deemed as a prank. The pair has since been arrested and is being investigated for child endangerment as well as violating article 96 of Egyptian law which protects children from threatening situations. They haven't been officially charged yet but could be facing life sentences depending on what the official charges ended up being. In our number 5 spot today we have Alex and Alan Stokes. The twin YouTubers are known for their prank videos but last year a video they uploaded has caused quite a stir for the two. Last October they uploaded a video that was supposed to be a bank robbery prank. They called an Uber and they got in wearing black outfits and ski masks and had large duffel bags and pretended like they had just robbed a bank. The Uber driver rightfully denied to take them anywhere and a witness thought that the boys were carjacking the Uber driver and they called the police. Once police arrived on the scene, they approached the Uber driver with their guns drawn. This poor unsuspecting Uber driver really didn't deserve to be caught up in all of this. Apparently shortly after this incident, the boys did a similar prank at the University of California's Irvine campus where police were called again. They were originally let off with a warning, but they have since been charged with false imprisonment as well 
well as falsely reporting an emergency, which could see them each receiving a four year sentence. In our number four spot, we have one that just happened the other day. A Russian YouTuber named Stanislav Reshetnikov has been arrested and is being investigated for the death of his girlfriend Valentina. On a live stream, Stanislav was offered 1,000 US dollars to lock Valentina outside in the freezing cold. Unfortunately, he decided to do this and things really escalated. Valentina ended up passing away due to hypothermia after being left outside. Stanislav continued the live stream even after he had discovered what happened to her and it saw him calling the paramedics, them showing up and pronouncing her dead, and then apparently continued on for another two hours after that. His YouTube account has of course been terminated for a multitude of reasons, and he remains in police custody as they finish conducting their investigation. In our number three spot, we have Pablo Benua and Ray Utami. These Indonesian YouTubers post interview videos with different celebrities on YouTube, but they have recently been arrested and sentenced for what one of their 2019 videos contained. In an interview with an actor, the pair asked about his ex-wife named Farouz. The actor then made derogatory comments about her and disclosed some extremely personal information to which Pablo and Ray were laughing and acting disgusted. Of course, once Farouz saw this, she was rightfully upset and filed for defamation. Earlier this year, Farouz saw some justice carried out when her ex-husband was sentenced to two years and four months, Pablo was sentenced to one year and eight months, and Ray was sentenced to one year and four months. This obviously came as a huge relief to Farouz as she posted on Instagram after all three were sentenced about her gratitude for the decision. In our number two spot today, we have Ryan Stone. In 2014, the YouTuber Ryan Stone led police on an incredibly dangerous high-speed chase that lasted over an hour, traveled over 60 miles, and critically injured a state trooper. Ryan had stolen a vehicle from a gas station that had a four-year-old boy in the back seat. He ended up also stealing two other vehicles and hit a state trooper going 90 miles per hour. It has been said that Ryan may have been under the influence of drugs and was struggling with addiction at the time, which may have possibly led to this erratic and dangerous behavior, but others suggest that some disrespectful remarks he has made about the situation have shown him as being unremorseful. Ryan was sentenced in 2015 to 160 years in prison, but will likely become eligible for probation in 75 years, which would make him 102 years old. In our number one spot today, we have LensCap Productions. LensCap Productions was a YouTuber who liked to review anime content. His real name is Trey Eric Sesler, and he quickly became one of the largest anime review channels, but things took an extremely dark turn in 2012. Trey made a plan to kill 70 people at his high school's pep rally. This plan fortunately didn't end up being completed, but Trey did end up killing his own family. He said that he did it so that they would be spared from knowing his ultimate plan that never ended up being carried out. It is an unbelievably tragic situation that ended up giving Trey a life sentence in prison. There were a lot of people who originally thought that maybe he might even receive the death penalty since he lives in Texas where it is legal, but that did not happen. Trey has asked for his parole opportunities to be taken away because he said he doesn't trust himself outside of prison. Mm -hmm.